Okay, hello everybody. Okay, welcome to Dale's Sports Line. Okay, I'm your host, Dale. Uh, a couple years back, me and Mr. Randy Jones used to do this uh, thing. Now I'm just going to do this. Mr. Jones will probably show up on one of these episodes, but for now, being it's been a while, let's talk sports. Okay, let's first talk about uh, uh, the playoffs. Baseball playoffs was actually started today. Uh, there was a game earlier between uh, Tampa Bay and Cleveland. I don't know what happened because I was actually working. So l let's just set the brackets and see who's playing who. So uh, Tampa Bay is playing Cleveland. All three games are in Tampa Bay due to the uh, ridiculous format. Uh, San Diego is playing the Mets. At City Field, all three games. Uh, Seattle's playing at Toronto. Or as I call it, uh, the game between two expansion teams. Because they were actually the last two expansion teams in, in baseball. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the Yankees, uh, Houston, and the Dodgers all got buys. Oh, and St. Louis is playing... Uh, Philly. All games are at St. Louis. Now, if I had a breakdown, who's going to win what? Uh, as far as the Mets and San Diego is concerned, well, they played six times during the regular season, and San Diego won four out of the six. And I just saw the score, and San Diego was actually winning 2 nothing. So, Mets fans, put my All right, continuing the baseball. So, like I said, uh, the game early between uh, Tampa Bay, Cleveland, San Diego, Mets, uh, St. Louis, Philly, and Seattle, Toronto. Well, as far as what my predictions are, uh, I think Tampa Bay's got a little bit more pitching, a little bit more experience. I mean, Cleveland was the youngest team in baseball in a long time to actually make the playoffs, which is amazing in itself. But I still think being all three games on Tampa Bay because of this ridiculous format, I think that helps them out. So I think Tampa Bay will probably just win 2 nothing. San Diego and the Mets. Well, Mets got to win the first game. If not, they're going to be in trouble. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm not going to, you know, being a Mets fan, you know my answer already. So I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, St. Louis and Philly. Two teams that surprisingly made the playoffs with not much of anything. Uh, Philly, again, you know, they traded away most of their guys, but still you got uh, Bryce Harper, decent pitching staff. But St. Louis being as full hoses last year, I think they want to go on in a good note, so I think they'll probably advance to the next round. So I think San Diego's, I mean, St. Louis is going to win actually, I think, in three. Seattle, Toronto. Now, a couple months back, I was watching a game between Seattle and the Yankees. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, Jared Cole was pitching against uh, Luis Castillo, who basically the Yankees tried to get. And Seattle won the one nothing in 13 innings. And Seattle said to the Yankees, we'll see you in the playoffs. Well, prediction was correct. First time in a long time. So, Seattle ended one of the longest droughts in Major League Baseball. First time they made the playoffs in 22 years. While the Phillies ended the uh, longest drought, I think, in the National League, which was 11 years. Uh, I like Seattle. Uh, two or three games. And we'll see what happens after that. Okay, people. Let's get to what we really need to talk about. Let's talk football. Yes, people. Let's talk college. I'm going to just name a couple of games. not going to name a lot. Just the main games that I think this weekend. Okay, so you got Alabama given 24 and a half against Texas A&M. And Alabama's at home. Now, if you watched the game last week, uh, the quarterback for Alabama uh, sprained his uh, right shoulder. So we don't know if he's going to play. Right now, I guess it's a game time decision. Well, okay. L let's talk point spreads. Let's talk all this stuff if you're new to all of this stuff. When they say a team is favored by 24 and a half, what that means is the underdog, which is Texas A&M in this case, 
when the game starts, they're already up 24 and a half to nothing. So if you're taking Alabama, they have to win by 25. So let's say, for example, the final score is Alabama 28 and Texas A&M 3. That means you would win because they win by 25. But let's say the final score is 27 to 3. If you took Texas A&M, you won because you got 24 and a half. So there's a lot of props that you could bet. What a prop is basically is like, say, uh, how many touchdowns a quarterback's going to throw, how many touchdowns a receiver's going to get or running back. Or yards, meaning like, say for example, I don't know, say, let's talk NFL, like Aaron Rodgers, for example. Uh, he's going to throw over 250 yards, and Green Bay's going to win. And say the odds are like, maybe plus 180, something like that. So basically, if you made like a, say like a $25 bet, okay, you would basically win uh, $43 because, it, because it's plus to 180 So So if you made a $50 bet, then it would be, of course, 86 So that's what prop bets are. So you could bother with that if you like. I'm going to ball. I'm going to go actually with Texas A&M at halftime. Now, I don't know what the point spread is. It's usually half. It seems Alabama doesn't get going until like the second half of the game. So if Texas A&M, if you're getting like, say, 10 to 12 points, I would take Texas A&M. Over and under with college, I'm not going to bother with because some of these games are just crazy. Okay. Uh, Texas favored over Oklahoma by seven. And the game is, the game is in Oklahoma. Now, if you watched last week's college game, that Oklahoma got their ass handed to them, which is rare. And Texas usually is not favored over anybody, especially this rivalry. Usually Oklahoma is a better team. So I think after that uh, mess last week, I think Oklahoma is going to come back. So I'll definitely take Oklahoma and the seven points, give, getting the seven points. Okay, uh, you have Oklahoma State against Texas Tech. Uh, games in Oklahoma State, uh, giving nine and a half. Now, Oklahoma State's got a good team, top 10 team. Texas Tech is top 25. Uh, this is a tough one. Uh, usually when it's a rivalry, I like to take the points. Now, let me explain. It's nine and a half. Now, if you want to get more points, which you could, the thing is the odds will be different. So, say, for example... It's nine and a half you're getting, and it's like minus, say, 107. So what that actually means is basically it's like if you would bet basically 25, you would win like 23. If you bet 50, it's 48. So example, if you would bet basically like, say, uh, ten, uh, Texas Tech getting 10. So you end then a half a point. So it would be minus 15. So then it would be 25 to win 21 and 50 to win 42. So in this case, I would take Texas Tech and I would get the half a point and make it 10. This way, if they, if they lose like say 45 to 38, you win because you get the 7. Now if they win by say... Uh, score 35 to 24, you will lose because basically Oklahoma State wouldn't buy 11. Okay, and one other game here, uh, Wisconsin against Northwestern. Wisconsin having the worst record they've had in years, 0-3, going against Northwestern, and Northwestern's home getting 10. Well, Wisconsin can figure things out. 0-3, and they just fired their head coach, so he's out of there. So I like Northwestern getting the 10. Okay, let's talk NFL. Okay, the first game we have is in London. Now, if you saw the game last weekend, let me explain to you how can, you can actually take both teams and win. People are going to say, wait a minute, how is that possible? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. Okay, 
If you watched the game last week, uh, the, uh, the final score was Minnesota 28 and Detroit 25. Now, the point spread, the opening point spread was three and a half. Uh, Minnesota being favored. So what I did was this. I actually bought points. Instead of three and a half, I actually went two and a half. And as far as with D Detroit, instead of three and a half, I said I'm going to get four. So you can like split it down the middle. So like I said, the final score was 28-25. So you would win with Minnesota, and you would also win with Detroit because they were getting four. And Minnesota won by three, so they covered the two and a half. Okay, so the game we got in London is Green Bay versus the Giants. Now the point spread opened up eight and a half. The main reason why that is because the status for Daniel Jones, nobody knows right now. I mean, he's going to travel with the team, but if you saw the end of the Giant game when he got hurt, Shaquan Barkley ended up basically being, you know, the quarterback, you know, the wild card offense, basically you're running back handing off the thing. So this is a tough one to call. If Daniel Jones plays at all, I like the Giants are getting the eight and a half. But if not, I can understand people basically like taking Green Bay and the eight and a half. So it's all going to be decided on that. Okay. Uh, you got Miami favored by three over the Jets. The Jets are at home. Jets surprisingly, shockingly, are two and two. And Miami, as you know, their quarterback uh, got a concussion and he's out. So uh, Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater will be the quarterback for Miami. And Zach uh, Wilson just came back from the Jets. Uh, this game's going to be back and forth. Now the over and under is 44 and a half. I like the under, so I figure like maybe 24-17, 24-20, it's going to be close. With the point spread, uh, this is where you can actually, again, like I said, go both. You can take Miami to win outright, but you're going to have to give up money-wise and take the Jets with the four points. So, so Miami wins outright, and you've been like, say, 25 bucks, you're probably going to win maybe... 15 to 18 dollars you take the jets it's it's going to be 25 to win 21 or 23 defending the part if it's minus 107 or minus 115 okay buffalo all right folks okay so let's get to the next game okay uh we got the charges against uh cleveland uh and the games at uh Cleveland. So it's Chargers uh, three points over Cleveland. Chargers have not been doing that good this year. So uh, should be a close game. Cleveland again they got rid of Mayfield so I don't know what to say here but uh, I, I, I figure like 24-17 so I would say lay the three and Chargers will win. Okay Minnesota against Chicago. It's a rivalry. Uh, Minnesota laying seven at home against Chicago. Uh, Bears lost a tough one to the Giants last week. Uh, Justin Fields probably going to run around. Minnesota coming off a huge win in London. Maybe they still might be fatigued after playing in London. Uh, seven points, I'll take Chicago getting the seven points. Uh, New England coming off a tough loss to Green Bay. Hosting Detroit, uh, three points. Uh, Mac Jones, don't know if he's going to play. So that rookie, Zap, might play. Detroit, I'll say one thing about Detroit. If you watch Hard Knocks, this team don't quit. I mean, their best wide receiver and their best running back is not playing, but they still hang in there. So this is another one that I would try to get more points, like get four points. So this way, they can hang in there. So if the final score is, say, like 27-24, you win. So... I say take Detroit, but get get the four points, get another point. 
Uh, the Saints against Seattle. Uh, Geno Smith, I think, is still out, so Andy Dalton is going to be the quarterback. Uh, uh, Lane, five and a half against Seattle. Uh, I don't know what to say about Seattle. Again, you know, Russell, Russell's out there. Uh, defense might hang in there. I don't know, but uh, with New Orleans giving five and a half, if you could drop it to maybe three, you might not win as much. So I would say take New Orleans in three. And if you want to take Seattle, maybe push that to seven. So you can win maybe on both ends. Uh, Tampa Bay giving nine against Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta plays Tampa Bay tough. So I would say in this one, I would say if you want to split it, uh, drop the points, take uh, get Tampa with seven and get Atlanta with ten. So you can get it down the middle. So if they win by eight, you kind of win both of them. Uh, Tennessee, two points over uh, Washington. Uh, Tennessee, hanging in there, starting to win again. Washington, they can't figure things out. So I think Tennessee in a, in, by maybe 10. So Tennessee laying the 10. I'm sorry, laying the 2. Uh, Jacksonville, first time being favored in a really long time against the Texans. Well, this, this I'm not going for. Uh, Houston plays tough, just like Detroit does. So I would say, take the, take this, take Houston, get in the seven. Jacksonville might win, but maybe by a field goal. I don't see them winning by more than that. Uh, San Francisco coming off of a good win uh, against Carolina, uh, given six and a half. Uh, Mayfield st still hasn't figured out what's going on. Uh, Jimmy G. See San Francisco? Smart thing is you kept Jimmy G. Just imagine if you got rid of him where you would be right now. So it's good that you kept him. Uh, getting, uh, giving six and a half over Carolina. Carolina's got a decent defense. I would say, uh, take Carolina, but get another half a point. Seven or maybe even eight. I think San Francisco will win, but I don't think they're going to cover the six and a half. I think the final score will be like within four. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Rams four and a half against the Cowboys. Cowboys surprisingly again three and one. Will Cooper rush the quarterback and Prescott's supposed to come back soon. Uh, Rams four and a half again being favored. Uh... Tough loss against San Francisco, but uh, San Francisco got a better defense. Cowboys will probably hang in there. So I would say basically take the uh, Dallas getting the four and a half. Philly, who's got the best record right now overall. They haven't lost yet. Five and a half over Arizona. Arizona is a mess right now. I'm not a Philly fan because I'm a Giant fan, but I'll say Philly probably won by a touchdown. Uh, Baltimore playing Cincinnati. Rivalry game, three points. Uh, you go either way with this. Uh, I think Cincinnati's the Bennett team. The over and under is 48 and a half. So meaning basically uh, they have to basically score, say, like 31, 31 to 24, something like that. So I would say with the point spread, I don't know. But the over and under, I would say take the over. Uh, if you could get a half a point, make it 48. That might actually help. Okay. Uh, that's it for the Sunday games. The Monday night football game. Another rivalry game. Kansas City and my Raiders. Kansas City given seven. Uh, obviously at home. Now Vegas needs this really bad. Uh, I could be impartial about this, but, well, it's kind of tough for me to do that. Uh, Raiders won finally the other day, so maybe they might win this game. Uh, it's going to be tough, but we'll see what happens. I think they're going to hang in there. I think they might actually do this. So my final score this game is probably maybe 35-31, 24-21. So we'll see what happens. Okay, folks, so hopefully you understand what I was talking about. Like I said... Point spreads again, like I said. If I if I say basically giving the the points.
That means the favorite. Getting the points is the underdog. So like I said, Giants are getting, all these other teams I mentioned are getting the points. Like the Raiders are getting seven. Kansas City's giving seven. So that means Kansas, if, if you're taking the favorite, which is Kansas City, they got to win by eight. If you're taking the Raiders, they got to stay within seven. Now, what uh, a push. Let me explain what a push is. A push is like, say, the favorite by seven. And the final score is 31 24. That means nobody wins, nobody loses. It's a push. So always remember that. Okay, folks. This is Dale's Sports Line. Hope you, enjoy, hope you listen to what I said. Uh, have a nice weekend. And have a nice day.